Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here. Now, there's some new situations developing. You know, you all heard about the Evergrande crisis in China. I'm sure. <laughs> if you're watching my channels anyway, you've probably heard about it. If not, what's happened, I'll, I'll bring you up to date real quick. What's happened is, is a big property developer in China called Evergrande, one of the biggest in China, has not really went bankrupt yet and it's very uncertain about their future now they're right now they're trying to move into making electric cars but uh, the thing is is they have these large loans that they've taken out and uh, to try to well they were building all kinds of they kind of overextended themselves a little bit they were building all kinds of these property developments across China and the Chinese real estate market has been in a bubble for years oh, this bubble has built ghost cities what they call ghost cities across China cities that aren't really inhabited people in China buy the properties as an investment um, and also there's a what's called a shadow banking system in China and this shadow banking system is extremely large uh, how it works is developers like Evergrande they open up what's like a bank and they offer quite large returns on the investment of your money these are called money products oh. uh, the thing about it is is uh, these financial products that they sell financial products and parentheses are uh, are reinvested into the property developments and as long as the real estate market continues to be hot people are buying up and making investments they keep this it's basically a Ponzi scheme guys they use the investment money in their wealth management products to reinvest in properties that are selling and then as the properties sell they're able to get more investments you know and, and keep moving this ball down the road or kicking the can down the road with these big companies like Evergrande. And there's not just one company in China, there's many of these development companies. Now, they were saying that they didn't think that this would spread through the Chinese real estate market, but it seems like this has taken a little bit more time than we expected, but it's starting to have this downward spiral now, right? and it's kind of a little bit too big I think possibly for the uh, Chinese government to be able to stop the snowball effect especially as it's concerned these big developments of real estate developments in other countries sky rises and stuff in places like London Tokyo uh, New York uh, Toronto but all this takes time to go down it takes time for it to sink and that's what we're in the process right now of this whole big thing in China with the real estate development and everything starting to sink. This is going to affect the West. And it's already, the real estate market in the West has already peaked and it's starting to be, it's starting to change from a, 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 a seller's market to a buyer's market. And what I mean by that is prices are starting to be reduced on properties you know and this is the beginning of something much larger that could affect things like the equity market things are starting to turn over basically and a lot of you guys on my channel have been watching about cryptocurrencies and stuff and this is where I'm going to get into talking about this cryptocurrencies are very much in a speculative bubble if you look at the use case actual use case examples now I know a lot of you guys watching the channel you're all excited about cryptocurrencies have been going up massively and right now they're near a peak on all time they're setting all-time highs so is the equity market but you have to realize something it's a bubble and why this is a bubble is because during the COVID crisis, tremendous amounts of liquidity were injected into the system in the form of stimulus, not just 
the type of stimulus that they were doing after the financial crisis, which was called quantitative easing. But this type of stimulus that's being done is a uh, direct to the payments to the people uh, in the form of uh, stimmy checks and stuff like that. It's called fiscal stimulus. Now that's coming to a close. So they're not sending them near as much fiscal stimulus as they were. And the liquidity within the system, a lot of it's been dried up because it's went into uh, the reverse repo market where banks have been parking money at the Fed and they're continuing to park money with the Fed on the overnight on an overnight basis, roll, keep continuing to roll it over and roll it over and roll it over. So we've got the Chinese property market starting to stumble and fall. It's going to affect the uh, mar property markets over here. And so what do we expect all this? What's going to be the net effect upon cryptocurrencies is we've already seen a massive rise in cryptocurrency. And we're going to see this rise continue after this period and after this plays out with the Evergrande crisis and the spreading of this disaster in the Chinese real estate market that's coming in the very near future, which will affect the markets over here in a deflationary negative way. But you have to understand that the U.S. Federal Reserve is not going to allow the markets here to roll back down too far. And all this talk about taper and cutting off their, the amount of bond purchases that they're making is all going to be just talk when the markets start to actually roll over, caused by the Chinese property market starting to roll over. How's it going to affect cryptocurrencies? I am expecting the cryptocurrencies to drop in price at a certain point when this actually starts to hit. But on the other side of this, I'm expecting them to rise in price. So what I'm actually expecting is a buying opportunity coming up for cryptocurrencies probably before March of next year. And then next year, the latter part of next year, when this issue, I'll call it an issue, something like this, issue that happened in 2008 with the Lehman Brothers going down. When this issue gets resolved, then we're going to see cryptocurrencies start to come into their own more. Not so much as a speculative investment, but more as a more use case scenarios and more embedded into the financial system as a permanent part of the financial system. When we actually see that happen, an awful lot of the volatility that we've experienced over the years with things like Bitcoin, drops in price, sudden drops in price, uh, two-day drops of 15%, whatever, this is going to disappear. When Bitcoin starts to go over $100,000 a coin, and I'm not expecting that, I'm not talking about five years out or anything like that, then we're going to see the volatility decrease and the price stabilize and it become a more of a uh, long-term investment for savers and things like that rather than a speculative investment with less use case scenarios or be more use case scenarios ultimately the cryptocurrencies are not going away they're here to stay but you're gonna have to play this short term you don't have to play it but it'd be very much in your interest if you play this short term uh, period where we're going to have a little bit of a turnover in the markets and a little bit of turnover in the real estate markets. Turnover, I mean a drop, right? Uh, equities are probably going to drop some during this period in time. And uh, when I say some, I mean maybe, I don't know, possibly 5 10%, maybe I'm thinking, uh, before the reaction. Because at this point, the bubbles are so large, you've all heard of the everything bubble. It's so large at this point that the Western powers that be, the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury and stuff, they just can't let it completely roll over because it would be absolutely disastrous. And the same thing is concerned with the, uh, with the debt ceiling. They're, they just can't let... They're going to have to keep extending the debt ceiling. And uh, I know we have uh, no bipartisan support for getting that debt ceiling through, and they've pushed it off for a few months, but it's going to come due again. And uh, when it comes due, they're going to have to make some sort of an arrangement to push it off further into the future because they have no choice in these matters. 
So what I'm saying basically, put it in a nutshell, is you might have another buying opportunity. You haven't missed a boat to buy cryptocurrencies. Uh, if we have this problem with the Chinese real estate market extending itself into the West and causing a problem with the Western financial system that will have to be resolved by the Federal Reserve. That means more easy monetary policy. And after that's over, then if you've bought in during that period in time, you might be able to get a bargain. In other words, lower prices than you're seeing right now on cryptocurrencies. And then later, after that's over, higher prices again. Higher than you're seeing right now. Maybe much higher. So, to be an investor, guys, you've got to be patient. And what's happening here is you're going to need to extend your patience even further. Thank you for listening. Like and subscribe. And we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.